Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Friday the 13th edition of Cracking the Cryptic indeed. Unlucky for some, but hopefully not for us, because we are faced with the puzzle Mini Palindromes by Eric Rathburn. Um, now Eric's a regular on the channel, always with lovely, lovely puzzles. This one's got three stars out of five for difficulty. Again, I've got no clue really what that means in terms of difficulty. Um, but uh, we have had this recommended to us a couple of times, so it ought to be absolutely splendid. Eric's puzzles often involve colouring. Um, that's my tip. Um, although without having solved it, I don't know yet whether colouring will be involved. It could be set theory, actually. Um, but I'll read the rules of this one in just a moment or two. What do I have to tell you about first? Mark and I are streaming tonight at 10 o'clock UK time. We'd love to have your company for that. Uh, we're streaming the game Teiji. This will be our second uh, our second go at it. So hopefully we'll get a bit further. We shall see later on. Um, other than that, I've got some birthdays to do today, actually. Evelyn, down in New Zealand, no less. Your partner, Diane, wrote to me and told me, not only is it your birthday today, but the pair of you are getting married on the, on the 20th of January. So we wish you all the very best for your wedding day. And I wish you all the very best for your birthday as well. I hope you're allowed to have cake in the run up to your birthday. I'm sure you are. Um, or in the run up to your, your wedding, I should, I should say. I'm sure you are. Chocolate cake. Is good on all occasions. Um, next, we have a 28th birthday, uh, which is for Marin. Now, Marin, your friend Vicky wrote to us, and um, uh, well, actually, Vicky was very mean, to be honest, because she described in great detail the chocolate cake that I gather you're you're going to have today, which has three layers. I know all about it, um, and it made me feel hungry. But Marin, I hope you have a brilliant day today. Obviously. Uh, and next, Marcus, you've turned 33 today. And I know this because your wife, Rachel, wrote, well, she wrote a lovely email to us, which was really a lovely email about you. Um, and uh, I believe that you you both watch Cracky the Cryptic while looking after your, your fairly newborn daughter, Morrigan, who sleeps in your arms while you watch. Um, anyway, Rachel described you as having endless patience and kindness. Uh, she's in awe of your parenting skills and could not have asked for a better partner. Well, that is praise indeed, Marcus. So well done on that. And I hope you have a brilliant birthday today. Um, otherwise, I just have some more names to read out for people who have successfully solved the entirety of Fistimafel's Sudoku Hunt, which was our Christmas present to our patrons over on Patreon. Um, very well done. Um, <laughs> very well done. We'll start with Balint Rago. Now, Balint, I have to say, whenever I see your name, and I think I have to read it out, I always think you should be a Game of Thrones character. It's absolutely brilliant. In fact, I hope that George R. R. Martin watches Cracking the Cryptic. I don't know whether he does or not. I suspect he hasn't got time. But if he does watch it, wouldn't it be amazing if in a future book there was a chapter headed Balint? Um, so Balint Rago, very well done. Um, Andy Glidden. Uh, Dennis Ocken, Max Chase, Matthias Holter, Rosie Bai, Ole Magnus Buchholm, Aaron Colley, or Aaron Colley, I never know which it's meant to be, uh, Craig Anderson, Brendan Blackwell, Jeremy Johnson, Tim Martin, Dennis Hebert, Naresh Satyan, and Peter Sputh. All of you correctly solved the puzzles. Very well done indeed. Um, and congratulations too to those of you who've been solving Jay Dyer's Hunt, which is also available at the moment, been getting amazing feedback. So if you're a patron and you haven't tried that yet, please have a go. It is the most incredible series of 15 puzzles and you've still got a week to solve them all. If you can, well, you've got a week to enter the competition. And if you do solve them all, you'll get a shout out on the channel in due course once I've finished the Fistimafel names. Um, now I'm gonna read you the rules of mini palindromes and here they go. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in a cage sum to the digit in the top left corner of the cage. Uh, so, okay, I was just wondering why we hadn't got the rule about digits not being allowed to repeat within cages, but the reason is all of the cages are tiny. That's why they clearly we clearly cannot repeat a digit in this 12 cage because that will break the rules of normal Sudoku. Um, clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. So those Whoops, those six cells there sum to 37. 
Um, actually, misclicking there reminded me of a video I'm going to try and make. Well, actually, you might dissuade me from making it, but I am very tempted, if I can do it, to release a StarCraft 2 video, frivolous video, on the channel. There is a challenge that a, a content creator I follow has, has sort of set the StarCraft community, and I thought it might be amusing if I can if I can do it to at least to publish the video, but maybe that's something only patrons would want to see. Let us know. Um, next, uh, cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So if that digit is a nine, then none of these cells here could be a nine. Because if they were, if that was a nine, those two would be a knight's move apart, and that is illegal in this puzzle. So don't do it. Um, gray lines are palindromes, i.e. they read the same forwards and backwards. So these palindromes, normally when we get palindromes in Sudoku, we get great big long palindromes. Here they are tiny. So basically all you're being told is that those two digits are the same those two digits are the same, those two digits are the same, etc, etc. Do have a go. The way to play, as always on Cracking the Cryptic, is to click the link under the video. Um, but now I get to play, once I've replaced my glasses. Let's get cracking. I realised I had the wrong glasses on. These are my solving glasses. And I just have to wait a moment for my eyes to clear. <laughs> now let's get cracking. Um, so, I thought it might be set theory but maybe that's just no I, I i think the only reason i thought that is i'm sure i've seen a puzzle before it might have been by samantha Mukherjee. Oh, no i don't think it was actually i've sure i've seen a puzzle filled with tiny palindromes before um and that was set theory i think all of these yeah, all of these little killer clues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. I don't think any of them stand out to me as being particularly interesting. I can tell you, I can tell you that sells even for what it's worth. Um, Oh, right. In fact, that is that is actually more interesting than I first thought. Uh, I was going to say this is even because I was just doing so, a, you know, a parity exercise on this diagonal. Because I know those two digits are the same, I know the sum of them must be even because if, if this was x, the sum of those two digits is 2x and 2x is obviously divisible by 2. Um, the same is true for that one. So that's another even number if we if we look at those two cells together the same is true of that one so those six cells i know sum to an even number well 30 is even so that cell is even which means i'm going to definitely color it given this is an eric puzzle um now that what i meant to do is to use blue for even now the reason for that is a bit strange but it's because we tend to use blue and orange in in puzzles that have to be bicolored um pied puzzles and the the reason for that is they're the most colorblind friendly and we tend to use orange for odd digits because orange and odd begin with the same letter so by default blue turns into even but what i've noticed here is that this pattern around the grid actually is very rotationally symmetric we've got a 40 clue there and again those two are even those two are even those two are even so that must be even which means that's even the 40 clue here, it works the same way again. So that's got to be even, which makes that even by palindrome. And can we do the last one? Hopefully we can. Which one's it going to be? Yeah, the 30 diagonal. Those six must be even, so that's going to be even. So in fact, we know that those are, because, because those digits get reflected by palindrome into box five, where they must all be different digits, these are all different versions of the even numbers in Sudoku, and there are four even numbers, two, four, six, and eight. So we know that this, these, these cells here are two, four, six, and eight in some sequence. Right, okay, well, let's, let's take advantage of that in the simplest possible way and label those as orange then. So we get an orange cross in the middle box because these must all be odd. 
now. What next, though? I don't know. Um, oh, hang on. I forgot. I've forgotten there was a knight's move. Okay, let's let me just mull over that for a moment. Why is that interesting? Uh, actually, I don't know. I don't know that that is interesting. Is it? it probably, well, it is interesting, but I don't know that I can use it by reference to these blue digits. Maybe I'm supposed to. Well, that would be that would be really, really bad if I have to do that. But what I was wondering is, because, do I have to make use of the fact that I know these are all different? So if we were going to do that, we could flash them, couldn't we? Let's flash them. So these are all different versions of. Uh, do I want to use red? What's, what's my other option there? I could use yellow, actually. I might use yellow rather than red, just because yellow, for some reason, I find orange and red clash in my brain. Um, so I know that these are four different digits. I don't think it's quite good enough, to be honest. I was wondering whether there was going to be some cell or cells that see a preponderance of these these digits. Um, well, I mean, that digit, for example, does see three of the four even digits. It sees it sees the yellow one. It's in the same box. This So this digit is the one I'm talking about. Ah, this digit that sees that one. It sees that one in its row. It sees that one in its row. Now, does it see that one somehow? Um, don't know. Uh, hang on a minute. I don't think I can do anything with that. No, okay, I was wondering if I could disprove that this was even, which would at least allow me to propagate some more oddness into the grid. But I, I don't think I can. I'm just going to, I'm just going to make those. So I'm saying if the, I'm saying if this cell is even, it has to be that one. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to stare at this for a moment or two longer. Um, Ah, oh, no, it doesn't work because, ah, ah, okay. Now that is interesting then. That interesting, that is interesting. I was trying to see whether there was any rows, columns or boxes where it suddenly became difficult to place the sort of bright green even number. And have a look at column seven. Column seven was actually where I started to look because it looked to me like there was a restriction based off these two in column seven. But I couldn't see how I could remove that one from being the, the 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 green thing because I hadn't appreciated that it gets transported in there by knight's move where it sees itself in the column. So let's go down column seven just carefully and check whether any of these digits could be the dark or this this luminous green version of the even digit. Well, if it's that one, it gets transported in here and it sees itself. If it's that one, it's actually a knight's move away from itself. In that one, it's the same row. In this one, it's in the same row. We know that purple is different from fluorescent green because of the original logic we did. It can't go here or here because they see those two. So it's just these two, but these two both get transported into this, these two cells, which see, um, see fluorescent green in the column in column six. So in fact, that is interesting. These two cells have to be orange now. Now, do we make an allegation then? Because this is very rotationally symmetric. It's a bit like yesterday's puzzle where we had mirror symmetry. Um, but the equivalent of that is going to be these two, isn't it? And then those two. 
and then those two. Now, does that logic just equally apply? Let's try, let's try it with this one as well. So this cell, in order to be even, would have to be yellow. Um, where I'm guessing if we rotate the condition, so I was looking at column seven, so rotation of the condition would imply row three is gonna be troubling for this digit. Where do you put the yellow even digit in row three? And the answer is absolutely nowhere. It works, works identically. Uh, you can't put it there because it would get transposed there and see itself. So there's nowhere to put it. So that is that logic is sound. So these are both odd. I'm just I'm not going to go through it again. I'm just going to stare and check that there's no break in the symmetry here. I don't think there ought to be. So it's going to be this column, isn't it? It's identical. It's identical. That is the same. And therefore, in these two cells, it's going to be, uh, what are we going to be looking at? Purple. So where does purple go in this row if these are both purple? And the answer is absolutely nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. So those are both odd as well. So we're sort of building um, a Catherine wheel, aren't we, from the middle of the grid and uh, is that just going to apply to these as well oh okay it well it's a little harder to see this one but that one I don't know whether it applies by the way I was just trying to see what even digit this this palindrome could be and I noticed that the knight's move comes into play that one if it wants to be even it can't be yellow and it can't be green by simple Sudoku. It can't be light green because of the, it would be a knight's move away from itself. So that one would have to be purple. Now, where does, pur so where does purple go in that row? Surely nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. It cannot go in row seven. This, this, if this, if this is even, you just cannot put it in row seven. It's, exact, it's almost exactly the same logic as we looked at over here for these ones. So that is also odd. Now, by rotation, therefore, we can allege that one's going to be odd, I think. So again, that would have to be fluorescent green. Let's just do one more of these to check. We've rotated the condition. So it's going to be this. Where do you put fluorescent in that column? It's the same as we've done this logic already. It's the same logic. It doesn't work. You can't put it anywhere. So this is lovely. We can we can orangeify this. We can orangeify that. We can orangeify that. And we've ruined our Catherine wheel. And we've now got a sort of multicolored neutron bomb or something. Um, okay. Well, so, the, I tell you what's odd about this. Something's got to stop being uh, orange because there are actually, if both of these were both orange, that would give us six orange digits in column three, which is clearly not going to work. Right, let's check that one. How can that be even? The answer, well, if it's even, it can only be, it can only be the purple one again. It sees green there. And it sees yellow and light green. So how can that be purple? So it's probably this row again, isn't it? That's where the restriction's going to be. Well, that can't be purple because it would go there. That can't be purple because we know that's odd. That can't be purple. It sees itself. That's odd. That's, that's a different even number. That's odd. That sees purple. That's odd, and that sees purple once it transposes into box six. So that is odd. And now I think I've broken the puzzle, I'm afraid. I don't know what I've done wrong here, but <laughs> but it seems that every palindrome I look at has to be odd. And I don't understand how this is going to, this is going to break. Why is there a difference between that one and this one? Um, well, 
Well, hang on, that one, I th uh, Well, I think there is a difference, actually. I think there is a difference. Because this one, I haven't quite got my head around why this is yet. It's something to do with the way the, these um, these coloured ones rotate around the middle box. But that one, unless I'm, unless I'm completely missing something, it has the ability to be two different colours, two different even digits, which wasn't the case up here. This one could only, could definitely only be purple. But that one seems to be able to be purple or green. That's weird. So, okay, well, let's... Well, in fact, well, we could look at this a different way and say that has to be has to be blue by column three logic because we've got all five odd digits in column three. So that has to be either. Assuming I haven't made a mistake up here, this has to be either purple or fluorescent green. I'm just going to I'm just going to trace this one round the grid. There must be the equivalent of this one. Is it are we looking at rotation again? Yes, we are, aren't we? That one that one sees that color, that color and that color. So that's fluorescent green if it's even. And if it was fluorescent green, I'm guessing you can't put fluorescent green in column 7. And you can't. So that one so that so there is rotational symmetry again, but it's for some reason, and it's going to be those two, isn't it? So for some reason, those ones, these are the asymmetrical ones. And I think in each case, let's check this. No, let's check that one. Can we prove this has got two different even digits it could be? It can definitely be fluorescent green. And it, I think it can be yellow. Yeah, so, so, so it's, I don't quite get it, but it's something to do with the way that these things rotate around the middle. It's causing a break in the symmetry. And let's trust that and do some labeling then. In this column, in this row, in this column, and in this row, we've got all of the odd numbers. So in theory, we can evenify all sorts of things. Now, what we don't know, though, is the colour of all of these even digits. I mean, some of them we can restrict, like this one has got to be purple or green. That one has got this one. This Well, this is one of the ones that is transposed. Actually, yeah, let's 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 make sure we fill in the palindromes as far as we can. Um, hmm. Well, OK, I can see there is definitely something interesting going on with this 23 clue now, because if we look at the parity of this 23 clue, we've got two odd numbers in the middle. So they're going to add up to an even number which means that one of these two cells is odd and one of these two cells is even. And I can see that whichever one of those is even, it's going to complete the, the sort of, it's going to make the evens quarate in its column or row. So whichever one of these is even, it completes the set of evens for its column or row. Um. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sure most of you are spotting something clever here. And I am suddenly just stuck. I mean, that 14 cage is now... Well, whatever that 14 cage is, yeah, it's either... It's either double odd or it's double even because it's either five nine or it's six eight, and whichever it is, it's going to complete the quant. Um, it's going to make either odd or evens quarate in its box, isn't it? If that was double odd, 
there's the five odds so those are going to be double even if this is double even that's the four evens and that's going to be double odd so that's interesting or to me at least <laughs> yeah i'm not the, i'm not the guy you want to talk to at the party um yeah it's the set oh is it the same everywhere is it yeah okay Yes, it, of course it is. Of course it is. These All the cages sum to even numbers, so they've got the same parity in them, and they've all got the same little pattern of odd digits and even digits in the corner boxes. So... So, I don't really know what I'm meant to make of that. that feel it feels important um, can I I don't know what to do is there some Oh, no, sorry, I'm not seeing it. I'm just not seeing it. I'm I'm worried it's going to be Knight's Movage, and I'm going to have to somehow, like, properly colour all nine digits, which slightly terrifies me. Oh, I hadn't seen that clue. I've got a 37 clue there. I just hadn't seen this. It's not. I mean, it's not very helpful. Perhaps that's why I'd overlooked it. I've got two odd digits on at the moment, so I know those those digits there have to add up to an odd number. Uh, hmm, bobbins. <laughs> um, okay. Right, so that's not helped me, has it? What else can I do here? Can we... Can I get better labelling done of my even digits somehow? I'm not sure. Or is there... I'm just going to have a look at this 23 clue again. So I know whatever the parity is of this one. I'm going to use the... Um, that's, let's make that P. Then this is the opposite parity, which I'll make Q. Because I know this is an odd and this is an even. Yeah, okay. And whatever that is, whether that's even or odd, that's then P as well, isn't it? So hang on, where's P? There. And that's Q. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, uh, that's the most underwhelming thing in Christendom. Okay, sorry. Um... And there's so much symmetry as well that I feel like I f uh, what do I feel like? I feel like I, I what I feel like is I'm not getting something about the puzzle. That's that's what I overwhelmingly feel like. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Right, sorry. I, I looked at this about 10 minutes ago and didn't spot it, but I've just spotted something now and it's really simple. Oh, Simon. That's clever. That's really clever. Okay. Right. That's, this is not odd, is what I'm going to claim. And it's not odd for a really, it's really simple. <laughs> I just see it and I just didn't spot it. If that's odd... The key is to think about what happens up here. And the parity of this 12 cage, I think, goes wrong. Because if this is odd, I've now got all my odd numbers in this column, which means that this pair here is even. But if that's even, that's got to have odd parity. And you can't add an even and an odd number together and get 12. It just won't work, however you try and do it. So that's even. And if that's even, that's odd. Which means, 
well I don't know what that means but does that logic just presumably that logic works everywhere because this is oh it's yeah it's, it's it's cyclical it works the same way that's really clever that's really really clever yeah so I'm gonna uh, let's just try it there can we make this 12 cage odd well if we do those two become even and that becomes odd and then we have to make six with an odd and even that's just really ah oh, that's sick that's my favorite bit of the puzzle so far that's really clever and by cyclical logic let's call it that cyclical symmetry we can just evenify all of these digits and then we're going to oddify all of the remaining dominoes there and therefore where, oh ooh, right well now in column two i've got i've got four evens so that's odd and that presumably yeah that works there must work in these rows as well because everything's so symmetrical so that's i'm expecting that to be odd there we go so we're very close now to oh no in in row five i've got five odd numbers now so those two are even then in column five i've got five odd numbers so these two are even and therefore whatever the parity of this is that is q I don't know if I need my P's and Q's now, but I'm, I'm going to keep it up because I like good manners. Um, the Let me try and get Qify this. Because imagine that was even. Well, it'll complete the evens for the box. If it's odd, it completes the odds for the box. So, it, so that must be the opposite parity to P. So that's going to be Q and P. If I can find the right thing, that's going to be P and that's going to be Q. Ah, oh, I, I love that. <laughs> that was a really cool trick, Eric. That was a very cool trick indeed. Mm. Okay, right. So I suppose what I do now is I say, if that's even, I actually know what the digits are, don't I? That must be a 6-8 pair. And that must be a 2-4 pair. And that must be, that can't be a double 6 pair. So that's got to be, a, oh, that's got to be a 4-8 pair. And therefore, we know we get our first digit. That's an eight. That's a four. That's a four. That's a two. This has got to be a two six because it can't be one seven or three five. And we can do that one as well. Oh, I see. So you get all of those done out of absolutely nowhere. Ah, that digit. That's huge. That is. That's our first palindrome digit in this row. That's even, and it's on a palindrome. So that's a two now because we need the last even digit in this box. Um, and in each, that's going to work everywhere, isn't it? So that's got to be four, which means that's got to be eight, which means that's got to be six because this cell here sees two, four and eight. So that's got to be two, which is on a palindrome. Oh, and this is going to, right. So this is going to allow us to do all of the even digits is my guess. I hope I haven't spoken too soon there. Oh, it might not, well, it might not let me get my P's and Q's sorted out. But I think it's going to allow me to do quite a lot of other stuff. That's a two, that's a two. Um, so in fact, that's become yellow, hasn't it now? That's got to be six by Sudoku. Can we do something with the, <laughs> that's eight by Sudoku. So the middle box hasn't got a four. So this digit and this digit are two, two or eight. I don't think a knight's move is telling me which of those is true. We might be able to work the, work out the P's and Q's though. That's got to be four and six, right? Is there is there some way? Because I'm noticing that P P could only be eight. but it can be eight. Oh, oh no, all right, Q, Q can't, Q, <laughs> we've got to mind our P's and Q's here, but Q is not even because it sees all of them now. That, if that was an even digit, what, which even digit should we ask it to be? It can't be two by Knight's move and it can't be four, six or eight by Sudoku. So that digit is odd, which means 
all of our q's, because we know all of the q's have the same parity, they are all odd. P's all become even. And then, and then we've done it, because now this P sees the two by knights move. So that, that P there, which can't be four or six or two now, has to be eight, which means that's two, that's eight. And does that go everywhere? Yeah, that one's got to be four or six by box logic, and it can't be six. So that's four, that's six, that's four, that's six. Down here, that's become a two. And, and we've sort of done the puzzle within the puzzle. We've done the even digits in their entirety. And, no, oh, I was about to say something about, and we can do more on the 23 diagonal, but we can't. We know those three digits add up to 15. Those five digits add up to 35, which is, that's at least, that feels more difficult, doesn't it? Um, nah, no, <laughs> all right. It does feel more difficult, but I'm not going to look at that yet because I can, I know what that one is. I know by, by mathematics, I've got double six, which is 12, double four, which is 16, plus four is 20. So those have to give me 10. They must be double five. which is a lovely deduction. Oh yeah, okay, that's right. So we can do the same here. Look, we can use maths on, on those cells. So there we've got 14 double plus two, plus two which is, thir oh, this is double five as well. Are these all gonna be double five, are they? Um, 12 doubled, 24 plus six is 30. Yeah, okay, we're going to get double five on all of these round numbered uh, little killer clues, I think. Or maybe not this one. This, oh, well, actually, maybe 12, 12. No, it's the same. That's double five as well. Right, so if we've got double, if we've got fives in all of those positions, where are we going to put the five in the middle box? Boom, five in the middle. As so often in these highly symmetrical puzzles, you will often five, find you get a five in the middle. Um, Okay, so now, hmm, okay. Well, I, I am a little concerned here that our next task might be to have to color all our odd digits because I think all we've got left to play with, play with here is the 23 clue where we've got those three cells and the 37 clue where we've got those five cells to fill. And I imagine that if we, if you, if we color for long enough, we can find some correspondence between these two or these sets of digits. The only other thought is, has that become got to make that add up to 35 in five digits. So we are, we are averaging seven in those positions. And we can't, oh, and we, and we can't use five at all. So you could, 1630. Ah, yeah, okay, that's lovely. I thought I don't need to color yet, at least. I don't need to color yet because there is only one way of doing this. If you can't use five, you can go well, how many digits can we repeat on this, on in those five cells? Well, the, we could repeat this one if it appears in there, and we could repeat this one if it appears in there. So the absolute maximum I could make those five digits add up to would be to repeat nine, two nines, repeat seven, two sevens. So that gives us 32, and I can't use a five in the third, in the fifth cell. So I'd have to use a three. So that, so we must have a seven nine repeating. That's got to be seven nine. This has got has got to be. Let's get rid of that Q now. That's got to be three seven and nine. Now, has that has that done it? I can see I can see that's going to propagate all sorts of things. 
around the grid, but I still fear we might be left with a colouring. Oh no, right, that's become a one. Right, maybe I don't need colouring yet. Yes, that puts one in the corner. That puts one here by Sudoku. One there by Palindrome. Ah, nearly. Let's get rid of my cues now because they're starting to catch my eye in an unfortunate way. Right, where's one in box three? And the answer is, I don't quite know, but it does allow me to put my one into box two. I can put my one into box five as a result of this. Right, and now this can't be a one by Sudoku. So that's a one, that's a one. And we get all, all nine ones in the grid. Um, so we're just left with three sevens and nines. Right, okay. And if that's a seven, nine pair and that's become a one, then that becomes a three. And maybe we can, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Now, by palindrome, I know that's not a three because it's a seven or a nine. That's not a three. So that's a three. That's a three. And that gets me my seven, nine pair up here. Oh, chance of a three in the corner up in the top of the grid. Three goes here by the magic of Sudoku, which sometimes is magical. Um... Now, can we do any better than this? The answer is, I'm not sure. I'd love to believe it was so, but I can't quite see how to do the threes. Okay, yes, no, no, I can actually. Where does three go in column five? It's not there. So that becomes three, which means that's a three, which means that's a three, that's a three. <laughs> And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. So now, that is all of them. So we're just left with sevens and nines. So this has got to be a seven or a nine. Oh, sorry. Right, I could have done the maths on this, this, this diagonal. That's probably easier. Look, I've got nine on it now. So I need 14. So that's they've both got to be the same odd digit. They've got to be both sevens, which gives me a seven here and a nine here. And a seven here and a nine here and a nine here and a seven here. And we're, we're suddenly, I think, maybe <laughs> we're just filling in the puzzle. This is weird. Um, does that keep going? It's suddenly done. Have I made a mistake? No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? Okay, that was brilliant. That was, ah, oh, there is so much strangeness that we've just encountered, as well as oddness, because, well, I'm not even sure how I did that. There's a weird break in the symmetry that I didn't, I can't quite get my head around, which caused this to be even. And it was the only, well, so that seemed to go round the grid. Uh, that was the beautiful cyclical logic with this um, this pattern of dominoes going round the grid, forcing them all to be even. And then, well, then there was the thing with the fives, which was lovely. And then there was the thing with this diagonal, forcing it to have, forcing it to be maxed out with what was remaining. And then it just seemed to work, didn't it? All of a sudden you could just fill it in in a flurry. And actually, I almost didn't need even, well, I, did, I actually, I did need to color these. I did need to color those because when I was exploring, you know, these dominoes and trying to work out whether or, or not dominoes, but you know what I mean, these dyads and trying to work out whether or not they could be even, I did need to appreciate which version of two, four, six, and eight they would be, or which color they they could correspond to. But I think that's that's a fairly minimal coloring exercise by Eric's normal standards, but as usual from Eric, an absolutely brilliant, brilliant puzzle that, well, it just made me smile. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.